Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying a game called Balatro. Uh, this game came out of nowhere. I kind of saw it a week before its beta release. This is the beta release. This is the beta playtest. I'm going to be playing a lot of this game. Spoilers, this is an amazing game. I love it a lot. Um, and I'm really excited to show it to you because I think that you're going to like it as well. I think if you're into any kind of card game, uh, card based games, deck builders, uh, roguelites, um, you know, basically all of the highest trending kind of genres in the last decade, I think that you will enjoy this game. And uh, I'm going to let you know a little bit right now that it is poker based, but I don't want you to be off put by that if you're not a huge poker fan. I personally find poker to be kind of a flimsy theme for games, but I do think that this game makes it work really, really well. And it's more it kind of leans into the gambling sense of things but we're gonna get into it um definitely give this one a shot if you can play the demo i highly encourage it i'm gonna put a link in the description for uh you know whatever way that you can play this game and i, I definitely want you to try it um so we're gonna do a new run and i have various other uh various decks here that i've unlocked so there is a uh, meta progression in the form of replayability my preferred and favorite form of meta progression and uh, it doesn't really feel like you have to uh, lose a few runs in order to actually win something so um, there's a few things to explain in this game uh, I will say the tutorial doesn't really give you the full picture it kind of gives you a very very broad painting uh, of, of what uh, how to play this game but there's a lot of hidden depths uh, uh, hidden depth and nooks and crannies that you can kind of get lost in the details a little bit but um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and explain things for you for the, so the first thing we're doing is we're picking a blind you can pick um, a big blind but we're gonna uh, you know I think like most roguelites you want to kind of build small as much as possible so you can accrue um, some we'll call it equipment for lack of a better term so we're going to pick the small blind. What the small blind means is that we need to score at least 300 chips. Um, so, you know, like in poker, we want to we want to win money. There's two kinds of money in this game. There's chips and there's actual currency. We right now have four dollars. We're going to use that between rounds to buy certain pieces of, again, equipment, quotation marks. Um, but for now, we really just want to earn chips. That's the actual, uh, you know, like gameplay currency that we care about. We need 300 of those. So the, what you're going to be doing in this game is you're going to be putting forward hands. And these hands are very, very standard poker. Um, and they work exactly like in poker in that, um, you know, like a pair is good. Two pairs beats a pair. Three of a kind beats two pairs. Four of a kind, you know, stuff like that. Full house beats three of a kind. Um, if you're versed in poker, then this is going to feel very natural to you. What's going to feel unnatural, but innovative on this, is not only um, are these, uh, you know, hands worth a certain amount of cred, um, they're worth a certain amount of points, and, and they're going to kind of play predictably. Like, you know, a full house is worth something. It's worth a good amount. But... Um, the way you're going to be building your game is a little bit more complicated than that. So we'll start by putting forward two pairs. That's fine. That's a, that's a perfectly respectable um, first hand. And you'll see that each of these are worth a certain amount of chips. They're worth about their value. So a six is worth a six. But over here, you'll see um, that all of the chips, all of the value of those cards was also multiplied by two. It was multiplied by two because the hand itself was worth something. Two pairs means that you get two multiplier. So it adds up the value of the cards that were played as part of that hand, and then it multiplies it by the value of the hand, uh, if that makes sense. So again, I could put forward two pair. This is a very convenient way of showing this off. And it's again going to multiply this by two, but because it's aces and queens, it's worth more because aces and queens are more valuable. You know, they're, they're, they're high up there, they're the high end of those cards. And you can see we are accruing um, ships and we're getting pretty close to our small blind, but you gotta be careful. Um, you have a, only a certain number of hands that you can play, um, so you gotta get to your blind before you run out of those. You also have some discards. This is something that uh, the game did explain to me, but I still had to kind of like parse it out a little bit. 
is you have discards those don't um count towards the value you know to, towards your hand so for instance i have three of a kind here which is pretty good but can we make it better i guess i could keep like the king if i somehow got lucky and got a second king but i could take these four cards and instead of playing those i'm going to go ahead and discard those and well eh, yeah we didn't really get anything something i have done um you know in in uh in my play is like you, you can discard as many times as you want unless you have something that like adds to the value of that there's not really much reason not to and this is our last hand so yeah we may as well well we're getting kind of unlucky um we're getting no no pairs but we're getting lots of nice high value cards so again i can discard those two cards again nothing okay so you know what i'm just gonna go ahead and play that three of a kind that'll probably be enough to get to our small blind there it's times three because the three of a kind is worth a three multiplier and then the three sevens are worth seven each and or sorry uh you know times the multiplier it's the math gets a little bit funky i've also got the animation um at max speed i honestly think it could um uh be a little bit faster i almost wish there was an even faster animation speed because once you get rolling and once you start to get into the flow of things you really just kind of want to get to the next hand and the next hand get as get to uh, you know get things going as quickly as possible now um, there's a, a little bit of a drafting mechanic in here. It's almost gonna feel uh, kind of like uh, one of those uh, Games I've played many like um, I forget what it's called Sekiro or something like that not Sekiro, but you know like um, uh, Drafting in the sense that you you have um, Interest mechanics. So like if I don't spend my money, I'll actually make more money between rounds So it actually serves you to not buy something but this is the store we're gonna be buying stuff between rounds and these are going to definitely help us in terms of um, increasing the value of our hands. So let's have a look at these. Um, so all cards are considered face cards. I actually don't know what that means. Um, this is one, This one's kind of a mystery to me, so I, I might actually buy that one just to see what it does. But this one says, adds the number of times poker hand has been played to multiplier. Okay, so I actually do understand what that means, and that sounds really good. Um, that some of these are I, I, like there's a very small amount of text and you kind of have to figure them out and it's actually I think uh, I would consider it part of the fun of the game is trying to kind of puzzle out these cards because it's not directly or not um, super intuitive but it is kind of fun to, to figure out what they mean and how they actually contribute to the value of your hand we also have vouchers vouchers are very powerful passives so this one permanently gained plus one hand per round um, so that means we would just get more cards and therefore have a higher chance of just getting better hands. So I think we've uh, bought a pretty good card. Um, you can see here we can only have six of these, so you want to try and improve them over time. Um, we also have a deck of 52 cards. That is a legal poker deck. Um, I think we can look at it. Actually, no, we'll, yeah, we'll look at it over here. The reason that this matters, it'll tell you exactly what we have, is we can actually alter our deck over time. We'll hopefully get to that a little bit later, but I just want to mention it now because it is one of those kind of strange things that uh, this game does, which I really appreciate. So we're going to go to our next round. We're going to go to our uh, big blind. So this one's 450 now. Um, getting a little bit higher up there, but we'll earn more money and that's the that's the good part So what do we got we got uh, a pair of twos we got an ace uh, we can um, sort by suit Let's See if we well, we got three clubs. So for instance, I could well, we'll keep the uh, we'll keep the ace. We also have three um, Diamonds oh, so we could like kind of go for um, uh, for for a, a flush but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just like bet everything on clubs. We'll keep the eight on the off chance that things don't work out here. Uh, and we'll keep the ace. So we'll discard these and see if we can get anything better. We did get a, another club. Oh, we actually got. Oh, we have our, we have an ace club. Okay, so we've got we've got a good set of clubs. We got an ace high on our on our on our flush here, so that's pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead. We could again. We could do two pairs with eights and eights uh, or aces over eights but um eh, kind of want to go for this flush and it's only a, it's a one in four chance times two so we have a pretty good chance of getting that last club and we did get it so let's go ahead and throw forward this flush 
Now this is actually this actually doesn't work for our supernova card here and I'll kind of explain what this means as the number of times poker hand has been played to multiplier. So basically what that means is that for instance if we played two pair and I, I like two pair uh, a lot I think it's a really good hand to kind of build on there's really good ways of building on it um, and then we pair, play two pair again then it'll actually this will just give us multiplier it'll contribute an extra multiplier to our score which is really really nice but here's here's some fun stuff here so we can we can see we've got a nice another flush here forming so let's go ahead and try and build into that try and get our, ourselves another heart and we did we got tons of hearts now we'll go ahead and throw those forward and you'll see here um i mean the flush is worth quite a lot but also now um this guy up here is hopefully going to yeah contribute plus two multiplier because we've played this hand twice now so we just get an extra multiplier and that got us to 716 far surpassing our blind you will find that once you've figured this game out and once you've collected a couple of cards that kind of contribute to your hands to your value um, you are going to ha have an easy time of things for a little bit but don't get cocky because honestly this game heats up like in the late game i'll say the late game because I, I do think that the game gets a little long in the tooth i played for about an hour in one run and i still didn't get to the end um so it can get a little long but i still i really enjoy this game so i, I really don't think it matters that much aces each give extra plus one multiplier and plus 20 chips when played really decent and then this is a tarot disables effect of boss blind really good card actually um we're about to do a boss blind and if we have a look at that uh, actually, I don't think I don't know if we can look at that. I think uh, one thing I would like to see as a quality of life thing is I would like to be able to, for exactly this reason, be able to see um, what the next blind is, um, just so that I can make a bit more of an informed decision. I don't think there's any reason to hide that information, um, so I, I would like to see that. And maybe the information is somewhere. Maybe I can click on something, but I, I don't know. It doesn't seem to be re readily available. But in any case, I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this joker here, um, and that's going to make aces a bit more valuable. I'm trying to save a bit of money. Once you, um, For every $5 you keep, you get $1 in interest, so it's, it's worth trying to accrue a little bit. So our boss um, here is uh, no straights. Okay, that's, that's fine. That's a very easy um, boss passive. Uh, we do have a couple of options for flushes actually uh, We don't have any aces. So I'm gonna go ahead and I mean it is poker So we you know, you got to bet on something, right? So let's go ahead and discard those cards and hope that we get some hearts. We did get some hearts We also got an ace um, Kind of want to keep that queen, but I also kind of want to um, Hmm like we've got a nice pair of queens, which is which is quite decent. Uh, but I also want to keep the ace because it's valuable for our uh, scholar Joker here. Um, it's a it's, it's a tough one. It is a tough one. So I know it's weird, but I might actually get rid of the queens just because I'd like to build on uh, that flush there. And we did get it. All right, cool. Um, there we go. Play our flushes. Flushes are, I mean, flush, I, I, flush is one of my favorite hands to build on because the odds are not only simple, but they're pretty good. They're pretty in your favor. So, and also flushes are very valuable. It's one of those weird quirks I've always thought of poker is how valuable flushes are. Uh, it always seemed to me that straights were um, a, div a more difficult hand to achieve. And yet uh, it always felt to me like um, flushes seem more valuable in the grand scheme of things. Okay, so um, this is well, we do have um, Jack Queen King Ace, which is really close to a straight, but we can't play straight, so we may as well build on flushes, and that'll also um, build on our supernova, and we'll play the Ace, so that'll be a really, really valuable hand if we can achieve it. So let's let's go for it. Okay, so no clubs. I'm gonna go ahead and oh wait, we did get a club. We've got the flush. There we go. Let's see how much we get for this. 10 plus 20 plus one multiplier. 99 plus four. Wait a minute, does this work between rounds? 
adds the number of times poker hand has been played to multiplier is this a between rounds thing like is that ever because that could be ridiculously overpowered i don't i don't know about that one that's that's strange um plus 10 multiplier when fewer than four cards are played i like this when i'm building on uh two pair i like the two pair and there's really good combos for two pair this is a, a well actually it says fewer than four this one's a little bit um it, it threw me for a loop because i saw i saw i was like oh yeah four cards is, is great but actually what it means is three cards fewer than four cards not like four and fewer um but this joker here is just a really good card it just it's just gonna add four multiplier to all of our plays so we may as well grab that and uh i'm still trying to save we finally got our first five that we can start building some interest on and i could keep going like this is a game you can you can play this for quite a long time um before like especially if you're on a good run like this one's already starting to form into a pretty good run um i'm seeing a pretty good two pair here Let's go ahead and do tens and sixes. That's not bad. We could uh, nine, ten, jack, king. We could hold out for a queen, but uh, I, I like two pair. Absolutely no reason why that we can't play that. And let's see if uh, I don't know if we've played two pair since we got supernova. We have apparently. So wow, um, supernova might be uh, that that card's gonna get nerfed. There's no way. There's no way that that card's not gonna get nerfed. Look at this. We've almost got a straight flush here oh god that is oh oh that's like i i, I like the, the the absolute greed i i feel like oh if i could just like swap this king for a wait i don't why did i think that i had a straight there um i thought that i had a 10. uh well that's slightly disappointing i'm gonna go ahead and discard just these two cards because either we'll get something nice there's the 10. 9 10 jack queen king eight oh okay hmm all right well we got the 10 and we should play the ace i was just thinking you know playing uh oh, you know what's kind of weird see this is why i like this game a lot actually is queens and aces is actually starting to become more valuable than a straight yes we would get the uh, plus one malt and plus 20 chips from playing the straight with the ace um, but like I say, straights are harder to achieve, so they won't um, accrue as much for Supernova. Supernova is already going to add quite a lot of multiplier to this, and it is actually pretty valuable as is. Plus, playing two aces is going to be better than playing the one ace, so I actually think that this is better. Let's see it. 10, 20, plus 1, 10, 20, plus 1, 10, 20, plus 1, 10, 10, plus 4 malt, plus 4 malt, 100 times... 12 absolutely just knocked it out of the park with that and that's what makes this game so satisfying is like when you actually get your ducks in a row and and figure out some of the combos uh this game gets like stupidly satisfying all right so here we go here's our first um one of these there's a, a few different kind of upgrade cards which i like a lot um these ones are definitely worth grabbing and i'll tell you especially in the early game I'll, I'll i'll tell you why so remember i said that you can only have six of these cards right um once you start to get uh a, you know accrue a, like a, a small um collection of them once you've hit that six number i find it becomes quite difficult to try and figure out what to trade out you said it i at least speaking for myself i got quite attached to some of these cards and i was like i i i, I know how this works now and i i like building on that combo and i don't really want to try and trade out for a different combo but the important thing to remember is you can only have six cards this card here which i am going to buy is an upgrade card which means you can buy it and then use it and it's just gone and you don't have to uh you don't have to keep it with you so this one has um upgraded we'll have a look at this um poker hands it's upgraded four of a kind now four of a kind doesn't come up very often but if it did come up then it would be worth even more now that we have upgraded it so you can see there's actually a way of upgrading hands so if, for instance if we were to if i if i could upgrade two pairs and make it more valuable than it is uh and <laughs> since i've played it four times now apparently um it would just be absurdly valuable as lowest rank of lowest card held now i had this in a previous hand and even though it's going to cut into our 
um, accrued a fortune there. This card is ridiculously valuable. One of the best in the game as far as I'm concerned. That one comboed with the supernova is just going to make things just, just amazing. Just fantastic. Um, so uh, I'm kind of seeing a lot of reds. Can we see what's our suits? Ooh, we almost have a flush there. So let's go ahead and try and go for that. That seems like a good idea. Go ahead and discard those. Yeah, and we did we did get the flush um and we have an ace so uh you know like we're we're, you know, we're already flying here so what this card does is uh, the lowest card that we have left over in this case r4 um is added as a multiplier and it doubles the rank of it right so it added plus eight multiplier this just happens every single round we didn't even have to play a second hand that was it that was enough our right, just playing a flush has now become powerful enough with our supernova that we just like we just win with a flush right away um plus seven malt if played hand contains a three of a kind pretty cool but um i don't like to necessarily build on three of a kind plus 10 malt when zero discards remaining oh that's really interesting i like that a lot actually um i like that but okay what is it permanently gain plus one discard per round i'm gonna go ahead and um just go ahead and leave it as is. I'd like to accrue some money. Now, uh, I, I mentioned that it's hard to swap these out. The way you would swap these out, by the way, is you can actually sell them. They're worth a certain sell price. So it might be worth doing that in the future. I like these cards a lot, actually. I've, I've come across here some really, really decent um, cards. Oh, what's our thing? All heart cards are debuffed. Okay, so our, um, our boss passive is that hearts are are basically worthless now so we can't really play hearts uh, but we do have a flush forming here so of course i'm going to go ahead and build on that and we did get the diamond so let's play it uh something i could have done actually would have um this is probably going to win but um something i could have done and if i was playing a bit better is discard this three to try and increase our um our raised fist combo oh it was just barely not enough okay so you can see this eight as this heart is debuffed scores no chips and all abilities are disabled um what it means by that by the way is there are some cards that will just like um increase like in the same sense that this card um gives us benefits for playing aces there are some cards that are like if you've played um hearts this round then it's worth more so uh you know it, it can ooh okay tempting to just like play the double aces because that's kind of nice if we could um you know what i'll keep the ace and i'll discard these three and then if we can get uh something to pair with then that would be decent ah three of a kind aces even though the the heart isn't worth anything i guess that just kind of makes it worthless doesn't it um hmm yeah let's uh i'll just discard these I, like i'm already gonna win so i'm honestly just like going for a victory lap <sighs> if i could just like make any kind of extra pair we'll play the heart even though it doesn't really do much what it does do however is it means we've played three of a kind so it'll actually um you know kind of build into our supernova in case we play more three of a kinds in the future but yeah look at that 1600 with that that one hand there would have won um and it's, you know, alone. <clears throat> Two extra hands remaining. You do get more money, to, you know, if the, the earlier you win. And you can see we're now, we're earning some more interest based on how much money we've saved. Um, here we've got another, we've got a, ooh, two pair. Oh, yes. Yes. So this is going to upgrade two pair to be even more valuable. And that's just absurdly good. One free reroll per round. This is actually really tempting to take. Three card slots available in shop. Honestly, really tempting to take both of these. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. Even though we spend some of our money, we're going to be making less money. Um, that's just like really nice. Oh, and it also free rerolls right away. Um, I do have some money left. One in four chance to add foil, holographic, or polychrome effect to a random joker oh good lord that is really good um converts up to three selected cards to spades i don't think it's a good idea to double down on any one suit so i'm not sure about that oh, plus one hand size is also really nice Jeez, these are really really good cards uh this one is just fantastic um polychrome in itself 
basically uh i believe that just times twos your multiplier so whatever your multiplier is will just be a times two so the fact that this could potentially give, give us polychrome um for free is is just like ridiculously good so now we have our six cards um so now as i say things are going to become a little bit more challenging at least in a strategic sense Ooh, i you know what i see you know what i spot i see two pair i see three pair in fact um so this is where a little bit of strategy would actually be a good idea let's go ahead and discard those twos i'm going to discard this four yeah I'll, I'll accept a five five is good enough so i'm going to go ahead and play these two pairs and you'll see why i discarded those cards so plus 10 plus 20 plus one malt plus 10 plus 20 plus one malt plus 10 plus 10 and then plus 10 multiplier for the plus five so that's that's what you call the big brain strategy is you get raised fist to double the rank of your lowest card so if you can get ditch your low cards and increase that rank then whatever hand that you have you, you're planning on playing is just going to be that much more valuable uh plus seven malt if played hand contains a flush oh god you really double could really double down on flushes plus two discards these are these are decent but i'm actually i'm just going to try and like you know cover my eyes and uh play uh, just play the game um i'm seeing wow this is actually a very I, I used to play a poker game with a family and co called albatross this is a this is what you would call a good albatross hand mm, we got three three spades so not the best albatross hand but anyway uh, completely moot because we're not playing that game um oh uh, okay so we got the we got the diamonds i'm seeing good spades so let's go ahead and double down on spades wow Okay, well, we do have that. Oh, I can't listen. I can't. Like, oh, okay, good. All right. We, and we've got a second uh, ace, so it's looking up. We did get rid of quite a lot of discards, but that's fine. This will probably win. Actually, we have, a, we have that six, so we've got plus 12 multiplier, so that's really decent. Oh, okay. Well, not quite a win um all right let's rank by suit no sorry by rank um i'm looking for i'm looking for something to pair let's get rid of these and hope we pair with either the the queen or the jack we only have one discard left so we got to make it count well there it is and we even have a our lowest card is a six so that's going to be a really good really really good uh, multiplier nice almost almost a winning hand in its own right big blind that was the big no sorry that's not the boss boss blind plus two extra hand remaining plus one interest cash out give me one second Okay, so we got three cards here. Plus seven malt if played hand contains contains a straight. When stone card played permanently, give it 50 chips. Stone cards are something I haven't even gotten built into. Like I say, you can um, you can actually change up um, your your actual playing cards, and you can even upgrade them as well. So there's there's a lot of layering mechanics in this game. I like to build on the hands, but also something you can do if you want is you can um, try and um, build on basically upgrading your playing deck to be so good that you only ever get good hands so that's that's kind of uh, a really fun way of doing things so, so um when it says when stone card is played what it means is you there's various different upgrades and one of them is stone so you could turn one of these cards into stone and um let me see if there's a way to find out what that does there's a way of finding that out but um basically there's a, a lot of different material upgrades so you could have like a glass card i think i mentioned gold cards were cards that would give you money uh if you ended your turn or ended the the the, the hand with them or not the hand sorry the the actual game like um the blind you you got your blind while you had a gold card in your hand so there's various different upgrades and they're all pretty interesting and they have their own kind of play styles so I'm actually not super interested in these and I, I want to kind of earn our money back. 
No full houses. I can do that. I don't play full houses too too often. Imagine they give me a full house right there and then and there. Uh, we have three clubs and we also have three spades. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to get rid of the spades because they're all low cards in favor of this is what you call hedging your bets. I'm going to see if I can either get a second pair or um, a couple more clubs. Ooh, okay. We got three of a kind kings. Um, no clubs. So why don't we go ahead and ditch clubs and instead see what we can do with this. Holy crap. Four of a kind kings. That's the first time I've gotten that in this game. I, um, since I don't build on the four of a kind at all, um, I imagine it's actually not going to be super valuable and we haven't played it before. So supernova is not going to work so much. Still 3000 is not bad at all. So I'll take it. Um, we still have three clubs, but I actually think we have four spades with an ace. So let's go ahead and yeah, let's double down on spades. I like, I like that idea. Discard these. Oh, okay. Well, um, we could ditch the spades idea because, you know, uh, we're seeing that two pair with queens and aces. Not bad. And our lowest card's a five, which is still pretty good. And we don't really need all that much. You don't have to go for, like, the, you know, god-killing poker hand of all time. This is still pretty good. And this is, you know, I, I, am, I enjoy this game because the kind of, like, long-term strategy is just as compelling as the short-term uh, strategy. Like, this is a poker strategy game, and that's really interesting because it really kind of gets the best of all worlds. There's a little bit of gambling, is for sure. Like, you you definitely have to play your luck a little bit. But, um, you know, there's the really compelling, like, kind of game-to-game um, -game strategy where you're trying to figure out, like, what you want to build on, what kind of combos you want to uh, really build on. Um, plus one hand next round for each stone card in hand at the end of round. Nah, I, we don't have any stone cards. Go up to negative 20 in debt. This isn't really worth it. Level up flush. Oh, that's actually really nice. But here's the problem, right? Is um, I I actually don't think I've made gotten anything from Wheel of Fortune. I think it must be like when you get, when you get a Joker card, it, it has a chance of working. So I don't know if it's actually going to do anything for us, especially if we don't get rid of any other card tell you what though we could keep it and um what i'll do is i'll sell this plus four multiplier it was good in the early game but it's not really uh making it count anymore oh look at that all cards in shop are 25 percent off worth it that's worth spending 10 on for sure it'll pay for itself and we'll buy jupiter here this is going to level up flush flush cards I'm not sure if there's a good reason to keep these cards. I had one in my pile for a while before I finally figured out that I could use it. Um, so I don't know if they actually do. So hold on. One in seven cards get drawn face down. Oh, interesting. All right. So uh, what do we got? We got a pair of nines. Five, six, eight, nine. We've got sort of a f straight forming. So we could get rid of our king, hedge our bets with the pair of nines, and see if we can draw a seven. Almost played those cards. Something you can do, we got the seven, um, which I, I, I find is a really kind of interesting mechanic or interesting um, way of playing this game, is you can, uh, like say for instance, I wanted to get rid of some cards, like I don't like the cards I have, but I've run out of discards. I could like say, oh, I'll play the nines and I'll also play these three other cards that I just kind of want to get rid of that aren't serving me. And that's a, a fun extra way or extra strategy of uh, for getting rid of cards. They don't really count towards your hand because it, your hand is only your most valuable way of playing that hand, right? So like, you know, four, five, six, they don't do anything on their own. They have to be a straight or they have to be a flush or they have to be something, right? So the best part of your hand is going to be the pair. So the pair is what's going to actually contribute to that hand. And then the rest of the cards are just kind of thrown away. But it's a good way of getting rid of some cards that aren't serving you if you've run out of discards. And I really appreciate that there are like little meta strategies like that. 
So um, we actually, we could do a straight up to nine, but here's the fun thing is if I get rid of these five cards, I've gotten rid of all of our lowest cards. And so our highest multiplier is gonna be nine times two. So that's actually really, really decent. Seven, six, five, four times 18 or plus 18 plus one because we really haven't played that many straights in this game i'm not sure how many straights we've played um one <laughs> that's that was the one but we've played flushes seven times we've played two pairs seven times so those are those are the two i've played a lot oh good lord look at this we've got three of a kind and we've also got a, a nice flush forming um kind of want to ruin the two pair for a flush or the sorry the three of a kind for a flush and of course i want to keep that ace because i'm absolutely just the greediest um yeah i guess you gotta kind of decide on something so i'm actually gonna ruin the three of a kind for a decent flush and it is a decent flush i'll explain why in a second um and we got the do we wait suit we do have yeah okay we did it um the reason it's a good flush is because it's again all of our lowest cards um we did get a six so it kind of got ruined a little bit but it's still a good decent multiplier and since we're playing flushes so often um that's really contributing to our multiplier plus 12 plus eight I will say supernova is actually starting to see its irrelevancy because it's no longer winning hands as often as we used to oh look at that though look at that flush with the ace nice heck yeah i i think as long as i keep continue playing flushes like every single round um supernova will continue to be relevant but you can see, I mean, like compared to raised fist, that just kind of gives you a ton of multipliers. Really not, uh, you know, the best it can be. Not the best card we could, you know, if we saw a better joker, we could consider ditching it. Plus two multiplier for each played card with diamond suit. Again, I don't really like to double down on suits. Plus one hand size is a really nice card. Plus 10, multi one in 10 chance this card is destroyed every round. Interesting. Um, oh, I haven't really been using my rerolls, have I? <clears throat> this is a Joker card. Um, is uh, is Scholar still relevant? I don't know. I, I think that a one malt and twenty chips is not really as uh, valuable as it once was. So something I would like to do is I'm gonna buy this. I want to see if I can get the best, you know, the most out of this Wheel of Fortune. I'm gonna buy this it apparently did not do anything um those foil holographic and polychrome by the way are bonus effects so they don't really like upgrade the effect of the joker they just kind of add an, an extra effect so i think i'm gonna re-roll these just whoa what is that whoa okay so we've got like a glitch joker that's really cool um Plus 10 malt when zero discards are remaining. What is this? Plus two malt for each played card with heart suit. Okay, I mean, yeah. Uh, hmm. This is a really tempting card to take. Um, Reroll is five. So getting rid of this Chaos the Clown is... I really wish this Wheel of Fortune would like do anything um all right i'm i'm i really kind of want to get this like a glitch joker because it's really it's it's a fun one um but i'm not sure what to get rid of and uh, this this chaos the clown pays for itself like instantly this is a this is a, one of those difficult choices you know um oh, wait a minute use I, I'm supposed to... Oh, right, it's a tarot card. Okay, we'll use it. Perfect. Nope. Okay. <laughs> After all that, it didn't do anything. Nice. All right. Well, that's fine. At least I figured out that I can use it. Um, 
So yeah, let's do a couple more rounds. We're already hitting the 40 minute mark. I really like this game. It's stupidly fun. Um, all right. So obviously I'm seeing, I'm seeing aces. Um, seeing a couple of hearts, actually seeing three diamonds. So why don't we ditch the hearts? And see if we can get some diamonds and also see if we can pair something with those three aces all right aces aren't worth as much to me anymore so it doesn't really matter um in a way that takes the weight off my shoulders a little bit for trying to okay four aces yeah yeah i mean it's four aces come on i don't know uh, like this is one of those interesting things where i actually don't think it's worth all that much Plus 10 multiplier. So there's that. I don't know what this added, but that was pretty good. 4,000 is really decent. Um, I am. Oh, we just have a flush. I was going to say, we, I, I see a straight in there, but it's a flush. We've built in the flushes so hard that there's absolutely no reason we should ever pass up a, a flush for a straight. Oh, and plus the eight. Yeah. Oh my goodness plus 10 multiplier so this just adds a random multiplier every time that could i could see that becoming irrelevant and it looks like our banana joker is safe for now that's cool two extra hands remaining more interest I, this game is just so stupidly addictive oh god ceremonial dagger is a really really fun card it kind of works like supernova in that it accrues uh, a multiplier over the course of a game uh, and it's it's really fun because you got to keep a space next to it and kind of strategize what to sacrifice Basically, whatever card is on its right when you select the next game gets sacrificed to it And whatever that card's sell price was gets contributed to this kind of pool multiplier So this is a this is a really cool card I liked this card a lot when I played it and it makes things really interesting because you can like the the more valuable the card that you sacrifice the more powerful this card becomes so you it's it, you have to like spot cards that you don't necessarily want to use but have a, a high sell value to kind of contribute to this pool and it's, it's just really good trigger each card in final hand of round two times when played eh. one in five chance per hand played to upgrade hand level i'm not a huge fan of these like chance cards and we have 20 dollars permanently gain one discard per round uh, well, well, let's reroll these. Let's see. Go up to 20. Uh, I don't like this card. Plus two malt for every ace, two, three, five, or eight when played. I, I get it. It's the Fibonacci. That's really, that's fun. Um, I don't think that's super valuable. Plus 10 malt if played hand contains a four of a kind. Meh. All right, so one in seven cards get drawn face down. I'm not sure what that's going to mean. Oh, God. Okay. So how do we play this? <laughs> how do we play these cards? I guess we could just discard them. Uh, we could play them with a hand. We could do my previously mentioned strategy where we just play them with something and just to see what they are. It could be that they even contribute to the hand. I assume that once we've played them, they uh, we get to find out what they are. Oh, look at that full house. I haven't played full house all that often so not super valuable we'll make this the last round because I, I, again i think my only criticism is maybe the games last too long this is a round 12 anti 4 of 10 um so you can just you can just keep going and i think it's maybe like you just want to go as as far as possible i'm not sure if it's the kind of game you win i really don't know i'm a little bit ill-equipped on uh you know that one on that question um let's look at suit for a second wow this is almost a, a, another good albatross um hmm. queen king ace we could try and build towards a straight uh, why don't we get rid of these three cards and see if we can get a second pair uh nine ten we, we almost have a straight again let's get rid of these i don't like these i don't like these cards all right <clears throat> so we do have two pair and you know what let's play this card and see what happens 
All right, so yeah, it we get to see what it does, um, what it is when we play it. So you could just like play it with a cart. Oh God, we had a horrible, horrible multiplier with that too. We completely ruined our raised fist on that. We have a third ace. Oh, we have a we have a full house actually. But you know what? Let's get rid of these two cards and see if we can get a better raised fist multiplier. Oh, that's actually much better. But you know I'm, what I'm seeing is that <clears throat> that pair of kings. Honestly, tempting to just like play kings and twos. We get to we get our our <clears throat> our uh, two pair multiplier. And we get rid of the twos, so that means our raised fist multiplier is, is quite good. Yeah, that's a good play there. I think that was pretty decent. But still, we're, we only got 2,000. We're actually down to our last hand this round. A little bit scary, won't lie. I mean, we, got, we have a full house, which definitely is going to be worth something. So I have to imagine this is going to win us this round. Yeah. But only barely. We're kind of seeing the limitations of our com combination here. Score 8,000. We did that. For interest. I do have a, a bad habit whenever there's an interest mechanic where I just kind of double and triple down and then I never buy anything. Half Joker plus four, plus 10 malt when fewer than four cards is played. Meh. Oh, but it's foil. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, plus 50 chips. So that's what that means. So basically it contributes 50 chips um, to, I assume, every hand played. Face cards give plus 20 chips when played. This is, that's a scary looking Joker, I have to say. Uh, and then Joker's tarot and planet cards appear m multiple times. And then this is plus negative one ante. I'm not sure what that means. Hieroglyph redeemed. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll find out what that means, but uh, you'll have to play the game to find out what that means. Um, this half joker is kind of interesting. It sucks because it means we can, you know, we, we don't make use of it unless we play basically just a pair. Um, or three of a kind, I suppose. But yeah, I'll buy it. It's, it's an interesting card. But, uh, yeah, um, was that the last boss round? Yes, yeah, so we have a new set of blinds, and, uh, yeah, the, the, we're gonna call it there, because, you know, this is, this video is running pretty long in the tooth, but, um, I can't recommend this game enough, honestly. I, it's really, really compelling. It's got really, really fun strategy. It uses the poker, um, kind of, like, st meta strategy to, to build on top of a, of a roguelite strategy. And it, it does so with, I, I haven't really mentioned, but a really um, great sense of style and flair. Like, I love the vibe of this game. It's really, really kind of um, tame. You know, it's, it's very calm um, and it doesn't really, like it has fun sound effects, but it doesn't like blow your ears off. And it's just a really chill little game. And I really appreciate that. Um, but yeah, this is Bellatro and um, this might be like one of my top recommendations of the year right away. It's, I am definitely going to be playing a lot of this game and probably buying it uh, day day one purchase. I don't know how much it's going to cost, by the way. Haven't uh, It's not really for sale yet, but you can play the beta right now. And uh, I hope you do <laughs> while it's available. But anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.